In this next video of the IRA tutorial series, I'm going to be uh, revisiting an older tutorial and updating it. So it's the Powerline Spline System. Uh, many of you have been asking for updates and then having issues uh, getting everything to work properly because of the complexity. So this new system is way simpler, um, it's easier to manage, and it's easily expandable as well. And it just automates a lot of stuff for you. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want you guys to do is grab the Powerline Mesh. And this will be provided in the uh, description of the video. You can just go ahead and download it and uh, uh, bring it into the engine. So I'm going to drag this over right here. Just have a copy. Okay. So we need the Powerline Mesh. And we'll do a little bit of a setup for the other files that we're going to require for this. So the next thing I want you guys to do is create an actor. So right click in the content browser, blueprint class, select actor. And we're going to call this Powerline. Um, system. In my case, I'm going to call this uh, Tut uh, 3, just so I can organize that a little better. You name it how you want to name it. So let's prepare a few other files. So in the content browser, go ahead and right click. We're going to go to Blueprints. We're going to go to Structure. Now we're going to use a couple of these and they're going to be really helpful later on. So the first one we're going to need is Cable underscore info underscore struct and then in my instance it's going to be v3 just so I can organize these properly and then let's create another struct so right click blueprints structure and we'll call this one cable override oops cable underscore override underscore settings okay and then that should be good for the basis to start creating this power line system. So let's go ahead and set up these structs before we actually get into our main blueprint here. So open the cable info struct. Okay, so mine popped over here off screen. Let's bring that up here. Let's see. So we're going to have to set up a number of variables here. And basically, this cable info struct is going to be, it's going to hold all of the information that's going to define how our cable handles things. So it's going to handle its reference, it's going to handle what, what position is on the spline, its uh, socket names, um, etc. And this all makes sense when we start putting it together. So right off the bat here, I'm going to need cable ref. Okay, so I'm going to get a reference to our cable. I'm going to search here and say cable actor. Okay, there we go. Actually, it's going to be a cable component um, and autofills for you. So just go ahead and select that. Um, we need the position on the spline, uh, but make sure that you uh, spell it right, right uh, capitalization where necessary. And so this is going to be an integer value. Next we're going to need a cable socket name. This will be um, very clear in a second when we set up the cable sockets. Cable socket name, and this will be set as a name for the variable. Next, we're going to need cable length. And we can go ahead and set this as a float. Next, we're going to need something called solver iterations. And that's for the cable component, the line itself, how many solver iterations it has. And I think we could just use this as an integer. Be good. Uh, what else we got here? Then we want to do a bool. Okay, and this will be cable stiffness. Do we want to enable that or not? If you don't have this available, you know, if you don't have, if you can't toggle this on and off, the, the cable might just flop around everywhere and, and not be very um, useful for whatever you need to use it for. So cable stiffness, then we're going to need cable width and an endpoint. So let's go ahead and add cable width. And cable width should be a float value. I'm going to go ahead and add the end point. This is where the cable will connect down the line. Okay. So this will be a vector value, x, y, and z. And then I think I'm going to add some defaults in really quick. So for solver iterations, 10 is a good number to start with there. I want to enable cable stiffness. Cable width, we're going to set as 10. If we set it as 0, you won't be able to see it when it generates. And that'll be a little disconcerting for you. Um, so let's have that default stuff there. And anything else here? 
So there's a couple things I'm going to do here as well, preemptively. So cable reference. I'm going to be using this structure both in the edit, a copy in the editor and a copy internally within the blueprint. And when I use it in the editor, I don't need all of these variables shown like this. So if I look here, you can see the cable struct info that's on this one that's created. It only shows certain variables, right? There are a lot more variables, variables that are connected to it. Um, I don't want to show all those, just kind of like a mess. They're just kind of a nuisance. So I'm going to go through and just uncheck some of these. So I don't want the cable ref on the outside. I don't want the position on the spline to be available on the outside for this one. Cable socket name, I'm going to need that. Uh, let's see. Cable length, I don't need. Because I don't want that on the outside. Solver iterations, I'll leave that. Stiffness, yes, width, yes. Endpoint, and I don't need to show the endpoint on the outside. Okay, so I think that's good for the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and save, shut the cable info struct, and then I move on to the cable override settings. So what is the cable override settings going to do? Well, if you look at this blueprint that's already created, I can select um, cable override settings. I can add in um, a, a, like a, a, a struct uh, variable there for it, and then I can define a cable. So I'm going to say cable one. And you obviously can't do this. You're just watching me do this so like you can see what it does down the road. You see this cable disappeared here. What it's doing is it's creating override values for that specific spot. So I could say, okay, well, I'm out of, uh, let's see, position on the spline. So this is the zero position because the first one made in zero base system. So zero, one, two. So let's just say, let's, let's affect one here. Okay. Oh, well, look, it's affecting that. And cable width, let's set it to 50. Big chunky boy there. Um, and so basically, uh, the cable override settings which we're about to make can override individual ones and that's all it really does there so let's go ahead and set that cable override settings okay so this is going to be much uh, simpler here so let's generate four values and then we're going to need cable name which is the cable socket name so cable socket name and this is going to be set to name variable this is amount of slack to add so we want to, we want to add like an extra bit of slack to a line we can do that uh, we'll set this as a float value and then we're going to say cable position on spline cable position position on spline and that's basically its point in the uh in in on, on the spline itself so it's gonna be zero one two three etc this will be an integer value because it's a whole number we don't want any uh you know uh, fractions there and then we want to add in cable width um, as a possible override settings now you can always add more to this um, this is just what I've chosen to do here it's, you know it makes it gives you a solid base to work from and this is really easy to expand upon so I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then just for the heck of it I'm gonna add a default value of 10 for cable width so the cable doesn't start off at zero uh, I'll leave this as zero. Amount of slack to add, I'll leave as zero. And cable name, socket name, I'll leave as zero. So go ahead and save this. And go ahead and close that out. So now we have our two structs set up. We have the basis of our blueprint set up. And the last thing we want to do is set up the power line mesh itself. Okay, so let's go ahead. And... Okay, now we want to go ahead and set up the, um, the power line mesh. So you have this mesh in here. Now, just uh, to let you guys know, this new system can use any mesh you want. And we, I'll show you later on how to use uh, random meshes as well. As long as you have the proper, proper sockets on this, it'll automatically know what to do with it. So that's great with this new system. So let's go ahead and open up um, this mesh right here. Oops, opened up in a different window. Okay. So let's take a quick peek at this. So I've already set up the sockets on this, but for those of you who do not know how to set up sockets, I'll give you a quick preview. Um, I'm just going to copy this location so it's easier for me. Now these socket names matter. So if you're in if you're in the in a mesh, you can go into the details panel on the bottom right here. You should have create socket. So go ahead and create a socket. I'm going to call this one cable one. Capitalization doesn't matter in this situation. Just throwing that out there. So I create a socket. You can see it gets here. You can move it around. This is going to be the connection points um, we're going to use for our cable actor components. So I already have a, uh, the relative location saved. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in place there. But you can just auto you know set yours up to align worth wherever you want on yours. And you can use any number of cables you want on this. So okay, I'm gonna make cable one, cable two, but if you have like a six stack of cables, you know, or multiple uh, setups here, you just add a cable for each line that you wanna have on this and it'll take care of the rest for you. It's pretty awesome. Um, so let me go ahead and just duplicate this one cable right here. Oops, let's call it cable two. 
And then I'm just gonna flip it so it's in the right position here. Perfect. Okay, so I have cable one, cable two. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And uh, that's it for this. Just exit that out of the mesh. So now we have all the elements we need to start working on our blueprint here. And just because it's easy this way, I'm gonna drag um, our blueprint out. Obviously there's nothing there with it right now because there's nothing programmed, uh, but we'll come back to it and take a look and see how it's doing in a moment. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the power line system, TUT3, uh, or whatever you have named it. Drag it on over here, okay. And so this whole thing is gonna be done within the construction script. So the tab's up here, go ahead and click on construction script. If you don't have that tab available, you can also double click right here and it'll open this window up. So everything we're doing right now is running an editor and not at runtime. So it's gonna be you know just generating while we're using this window right here. And let's go ahead and dive into this system. So I'm gonna have you guys create a few variables just up front uh, before we start getting into anything crazy here. So you know those two structs we created right here? Well, we wanna bring those into this blueprint so we can use them, okay? And how we're gonna do that is this. We're gonna click over here, and I'm gonna go ahead to the my variables. I'm gonna select um, the variables, and I'm going to create my first one. You know, just so this is easier, I'm gonna go ahead and open up both these so I can easily reference the names on the top. I'm just gonna help me out a bit here. So this is the variable we created. Obviously, it's not the right name or the right type. And so let's do the first one, which will be cable override settings. Oops, setterings. Set cable override settings. Okay, that, that makes sense. And then we have to actually assign this cable override setting struct to this variable. So if you come up here into the details panel under variable type, use this drop down and type in the name of that structure. So cable, oops, cable over, oh jeez, can't spell apparently, override, mm. cable override settings. Okay, so you can see I have other copies here because I've, um, I've done this before. So cable override settings, let me select that. So now I have this structure here in editor, which is great, you know, that's what I want. Um, let's see, pause. Okay, so what I have to do now is under the variable type, I don't want this to be just, pause. So now I have to go up here to the variable type and instead of clicking this drop down to select what type it is, right next to it, there's a little button. So I can make this variable different types of variables. Right now it's just a single variable. If I click on this and drop down, I can see array. So I want to make an array of these. Okay. So I have an array of this structure so I can add as many elements to it as I want. Um, so that means I can override as many cables as I want using this array later on, which will be really good. And also going to promote this uh, to a public variable. What that means is when I click this eyeball and compile it, this variable now will show up. So I have this empty actor out here. Um, and you can see right now I have cable override settings. Now it appears here in the editor under the details panel. You can select it, you know, add, hit the plus sign, and then start adding structures to that array, which is great. So let's go ahead and move on to adding the cable info struct. Now this is gonna hold all the information for us. Um, sorry, it's gonna hold all of the information for our, um, for our blueprint here, um, for the, you know, pause that, delete that last stuff. So next we're gonna add the uh, cable info struct. So let's go ahead and add it. Add, you know, let's just go ahead and right click this one and say duplicate because it's already an array. And we'll say, cable, let's delete this and say cable info struct. And then up here, we just change the type to cable info struct. You can see I have cable info struct V3 right here. And that's good and it makes it. Um, now there's a couple things going on here. I want to have two versions of this. I want an external version and an internal version. The external version will be facing um, the editor so I can modify things on it. That's why I had you hide some variables. Um, and then there's gonna be an internal version. So I need two separate ones because they're gonna be using, you're using two separate tasks, but I need the same variables, right? So there's no point in making a new struct when I could just have two, but add two different variables, right? So it's using that as like kind of like a parent, an instance of it and then we're going to use one of those instances. So it'll make sense in practice. Um, well, let me go ahead and just duplicate this 
and I'm going to say this one right here is going to be called internal. And just for the sake of making this easy to understand, I'm going to call this one Keyboard Info Struct Editor. And if this can be used internally, I don't need this to be public. I don't need it showing up on the outside. So go ahead and save that. Okay. So now we have all of the main structs that we need to get this done. And I think we can go ahead and get into this. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, now that we have that base set up for our blueprints, let's go ahead and start uh, getting into the construction script here. So the first thing I want you guys to do is come up here to add component, type in spline, because we're going to need that spline uh, for everything to uh, be created on. And I'm going to hit compile. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag this spline, um, basically a variable out here so I can start working on it, okay? So drag off this and say git number of spline points. Okay, you can see it pops up right here. And this is showing up because I have context, context sensitive on. So if, if you're looking at something like this and you just see all this stuff right here and you want to be more specific to what you're typing in, just type, you know, just turn on context sensitive. So get number of spline points, pull that up. Now we're going to want to iterate over this these spline points in a loop. So we're going to put out a for loop. So we have a for loop here. We're going to go ahead and run this in right here. And you know, it, it put this on the first index. We don't want this on the first index. We want it to be the last index. And then I want to save this index number. So let's go ahead and drag off that, say promote to variable, and we're going to say current index. And that way we don't have to have, when we're used, looking for the current index, we don't have to drag this off, you know, for miles and miles and miles. It's just, you can just reference this variable right here, which is awesome. All right, so let's compile that. So we have our current index. And let's see, what do we want to do on this loop first? So we're going to break this into three parts. I'm going to say we're going to do put the power pole meshes on the uh, on the spline point first. So power point, uh, sorry, sorry, the power pole, power point, geez. P power pole meshes, we're going to put those along the spline first. And then we're going to go ahead and generate the cables between them. And then I'm going to make it so you can override um, the cable systems um, to, you know, set them uniquely. And that should cover all of it. So... Let's go ahead and set up the power pole meshes. So we're going to want to spawn those meshes. So let's right click and say add static mesh component. So right here, static mesh component. And I'm going to drag off this and say set static. Oops. Set static mesh. It's right there. And I'm going to show you guys a way to make unique meshes later. But for now, we're just going to set this for... Um, Utility pool? What did I call that? Oh, geez. Let me take a quick look here. What did I call this one? Power line mesh. Okay. Getting old. Power line mesh with sockets. Okay. So we got that right there. And let's go ahead and, you know, this is good. Okay. So this will, if we do this, it's going to spawn um, all of these. Uh, so basically, it's going to loop over how many spline points there are. And it's going to spawn um, meshes, right? Which is great. So we just have to make sure that we can set the proper location and rotation. So let's go ahead and set up the logic for that. So when this cable, oops, so when this uh, mesh spawns, we want to spawn at the right spline point location. So let's go ahead and get reference to our spline. Drag off that and say get location at spline point. Okay. And you can leave that as local. That is fine. We also wanted to make sure we can, when we're iterating over this loop, we can get at the right index. So go ahead and drag the index variable out, plug it right in. So what that does is it's going to give us the right location. So if I were to compile this and we look at our blueprint here, well, there's there's multiple um, power poles here, but they're stacked on each other, right? Um, which isn't what we want. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So in viewport right here, um, I can see my spline. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on one of these spline points and just give it a little bit more breathing room. That's in viewport. Back to construction script here. So we want the mesh to appear where it's supposed to appear on the spline point. So go ahead and just plug this in. It'll give you a little conversion. Go ahead and hit compile. Check on it. Hey, look at that. We now have, um, let's see here, we have this, the, uh, the power poles appearing at the proper spline points. Now, if I were to hold alt and drag off while selecting one of these spline points, it generates another one. Keep doing that. Keep generating more, which is awesome. Um, so you can see, clearly see that it's putting them at the right spline points, although they are not rotating at all. So let's set that up. 
So let's go ahead and drag the spline uh, reference down. Let's say uh, get rotation at spline point. Okay, make sure you plug in the index here. And then we wanna set the relative ro rotation of each static mesh that's created um, in this array. Oh, sorry, in the, like, while this is looping. So let's pull this off here and say, yeah, hey, actually, you know what? Let's drag off this and say set relative. And you can see right here, you can see set relative rotation. Go ahead and drag that variable over, plug it in, pull this over, plug it in, compile it. And now we should have, ta-da, rotation. Okay, so now that we have that working, we're gonna wanna store all of this information within some type of an array we can reference. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create an array for these power line meshes, which is basically just going to be um, static mesh components. So under the variables uh, panel over here, make a new variable. We're gonna say array of power poles, com power lines, utility poles, whatever you may call them. Add that in, and so now we have that array, but we wanna make sure that it is the right variable type. So go ahead and type in static mesh component. And you can see here we have static mesh component, object, object reference, and that's correct. So go ahead and do that. Uh, compile it just for kicks. Drag this off here. You can always uh, drag off and it says get array power, you know, you could say get or set. Um, in this instance, I always just hold control and, it, and then and it, it'll just uh, gets a get for me. If I hold alt, it does a setter for me, just an FYI there. Uh, and then I wanna go ahead and drag off this and say add, okay? Select add, and I'm gonna add this mesh. So each mesh I create, I'm gonna add it to this array. Okay. Now one thing to note, um, now that I have an array here, I have to do something else because I'm in the construction script. I have to go back to the beginning, get myself some room, and I have to clear this array. So that means every time this, this um, construction script runs, the first thing it's going to do is remove the array, or it's going to remove everything from the array. Because if I don't do this, this array is going to constantly fill up, and it's going to keep spawning more and more and more meshes. And that's not necessary, and it's going to cause a lot of problems for us. So we want to make sure that we clear the array before we use it. Okay. Um, and that's it for creating just the, getting the mesh to spawn in the right location and being able to set its rotation. So, you know, one big part down there. And just to make sure that uh, this is well documented, highlight all of your stuff, press the C key, and you can make a comment here. So let's just say this is spawn mesh, long spline. There you go. So what we wanna do now, which we're going to want to do now, um, is drag off this. And then we're gonna add in the, basically the cable component itself. But before I do that, Let's just see what we have to do for setting that up. So we're gonna grab the utility, let's see, we're gonna array of power poles, drag that out, control drop, kind of line this up in a good spot, drag off this and say for each loop. So this will be a, a for each loop, it's like this, but it uses the array to define the range. And let's go ahead and plug this completed into it. So we're gonna do this next. So after this whole thing completes, we move on to this right here and we are gonna be creating the cables, okay? And everything that goes with it. So um, let us create a variable off this. So we drag off this and we're gonna to promote to a variable. We're gonna say current um, pole mesh, right? And that, we can, that we, can, we, we can easily work on whatever current mesh we have. And then I'm actually gonna recycle this current index right here. So I'm gonna drag off, hold alt, and I'm gonna set this. So we've already used this index um, up here and all that work is done. So there's no problem in us recycling it here. No need to you know, make a second uh, current index variable there. And then I want to go ahead and work on, or get the socket names from that mesh. So you know how we set up the names in that mesh? Well, this is where these things start to come into play. So if I were to, you know, current power, sorry, current pull mesh here. So I have that, um, drag it off. And I'm gonna say, get all socket names. Okay, it's right here. And so basically it's gonna look at that pull mesh and it says, oh, I see you have cable one and cable two on there and you know, or any number of cables you have on there. Now it's gonna work on those. So let's do a nested for each loop. So what that means is gonna be a loop within a loop. So for each loop, okay. I'm gonna plug into this right here. 
So it's going to activate this for the first um, for the first uh, mesh in the array. It's going to come over here, and it's going to do this logic for however, however many socket names there are. So it's going to do one, one, two. You know, cable one, cable two. It's going to do. Uh, it's just going to keep counting up. So you know, so if there's three of these, it's going to do each one of these once, and then all of the socket names. Um, if that does not make sense, or you're having trouble with that, you know, just let me know in the comments. I will do my best to help you out there but it should make sense when you see it in action. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I want to be able to add a cable component, right? So let's right click here and say add cable component. Okay, it's right here. And just like before, we're gonna need, need to define some locations for this. Um, so like, where is this going to start? So obviously we want it to start where, um, well, wherever the current socket is so um, and then we want it to branch the next socket on the next um, power you know power pole so I think what I want to do is I want to save off this variable right here so let's say promote to variable we'll say it's the current socket name so we can just reference this whenever we want really easily and we're gonna get the current socket name and then we also want to get the current pole mesh right because those are the things we're gonna be working on right here and then I want to get the socket location so I can set the cable in the right location, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say, right click and say, get socket uh, location. Uh, get socket location. Yeah, that should work. And, you know, it defaulted to the spline right here. I don't want that. Just delete it. And my target is going to be the power pole, right? So I want to get a specific location. So for this instance, let's say cable one. You know, I want to get to cable one. And so it's going to get the first current socket name, which we know is cable one. And it's going to target that, that first mesh that's created. And now we have that current location. Now I could plug this in here, but guess what's going to happen? Um, it's going to, it's not going to give me the proper location. And that's because this is a relative location and this is a world space location. So I need to do some type of conversion, right? Because if I plug these in, it'll never end up in the right spot. So the way to do that is to do an inverse transform location. So right click, inverse, transform location. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Inverse transform location. And so what location do we wanna transform? Well, we wanna transform this world location into a relative location. So go ahead and plug that in. And the transform it's gonna be based on, like where, what relative location is it gonna to compare to, right? So it knows what it's doing. It's gonna be comparing it to um, this, this actor we're currently in, this whole thing right here, because it knows where its uh, default root is. So let's go ahead and right click and say, get actor transform. So right here, get actor transform. So it's gonna, it's gonna utilize this information to create the proper relative location. So if I plug that in, makes that little conversion for me, that's good. And if all goes well here, I think that we should have cables, plug, let's see, we'll have cables, let's, let's take a look. Yeah, so we have cables, you can see like they all start at zero, zero, zero um, in the relative location, but they know where they're supposed to, oh, sorry, that they're all starting at their proper location here, but, they're, but their end location isn't defined, so it's dropping to zero, 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 which is right here on um, in this actor. But that's really cool though. So it automatically knows that for every single power pole, it sees its sockets. Like, okay, this is this is cable one. I'm gonna go ahead and add cable one. It knows cable two, right? Cause it has that in the array and it automatically goes, okay, well, I'm gonna set you to all the cable twos. So now the next trick is to have them say like, okay, I know where I'm starting, but my endpoint should be the next one in the chain. So all we have to do is get the reference for the next one in order. And it's really simple that way. Um, so this is pretty cool. So I love this system because it's way more automated than my last one and it just does it for you. Like once it's set up, it's really nice that way. So how do we get the next reference um, down the line? Well, we're gonna go ahead and get the current power pole here. Go ahead and make a copy of that. Um, you know, we don't want the power pole, I'm sorry. We wanna get the array of power poles here and we wanna type in get. And we just wanna get a copy, all right? Cause this is, this is the array. And then we want to get the current index, right? And if I just plug this in right here, it would just give me the current power pole where things are starting already, but we want to get the next one in line. So I'm going to go ahead and say plus, you know, and then I'm going to say integer plus integer, and it's going to be plus one. And so it's going to get the next one ahead in this array 
which is going to be the next connection point. So basically, it's like, oh, I'm right here, but I'm going to get the information for this location and set it as the end location, right? So it's going to connect everything together like that. So we have to copy this logic um, right here, bring it down. We have to do the same type of, uh, you know, same type of logic to this. We have to get the right, um, the right location. And this is going to go right here because that's going to be the power pole ahead. And that's the one we want to be working on. And let's see. So a couple things here. Um, how do we set the end location? Okay. And this is where things are kind of interesting. So. I'm going to have it so we run all the information from those structs that we had. We're going to run them together. We're going to create a function that's going to set all the variables for us. So let me go ahead and uh, you know get into that with you. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you guys what this is like. So I'm just going to pull off on this, set end location. And if I just drag this in right here, um, all of them should have the proper end locations. Now we're not going to be doing it this way. Oops. Yeah, you can see that the I have um, I have to get rid of that extra piece there. But but by and large, you see that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. So, uh, but yeah, we're not going to have this here. All right. So let's get into that. Okay. So we want to act upon the cable info struct from the editor. Um, now I will explain why we do that. But let's bring it out first, and we're going to do. Um, another for loop here. So for each loop. So we have a loop within a loop within a loop. Oh boy, we are looping now. <laughs> uh, that's not funny. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and drag off this. And there's a little thing here, it says break info struct v3. Click on that. And now this gives us, um, uh, we can basically get access to all of those cable info structs. So um, what you're going to want to do here is Go back to the editor, you know, compile, go back to the editor, select the blueprint, and it says cable, cable, cable info struct editor. Go ahead and add uh, a number here. Now, what you're going to want to do is for every cable you want or you have on here, which we know we have two, you're going to want an element for it. Um, so the first one would be cable one, right? And then the second one would be cable two. And if we don't do this, um, then it won't have this information and it won't be able to work. So this is where you define the base information for your cable. So like, for instance, so I want a cable and I want this one to be 50, okay? Once we set this up, you'll see that one cable, one whole string of cables will be uh, 10, and like in width, and one, be, one whole string will be 50, okay? And so basically you can really easily go through and just set the, set the, uh, the variables for those cables. Um, so let's go ahead and continue doing that right now. Okay, so in order to target just what we want, um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of sorting here. So let's see here, current socket name. I'm going to drag that out, and I'm going to get cable socket name. I'm going to say equals, and I'm just going to flip these because it looks nicer. Um, but this is going to sort, so it's okay. It's going to say like, um, if you have if these socket names are equal, so we know that there's cable one and cable two, um, so if, it, if cable one matches uh, the current socket, cable one, then it's going to set just the variables for cable one. Same thing for cable two. This is how we start to distinguish between the cables. Go ahead and plug that in. So this is our little simple sorting branch right here. Okay, go ahead and right click and say make cable info and then you can see struct v3 right here. Click the little, click little drop down there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start storing these va these variables, um, you know, in, in an array. So the cable info struct internal array. So cable info struct internal. I'm going to drag that out, drag off of that. I'm going to say add. All right. So I'm going to start adding this into this array so I can have this information. I'm going to, you know, if, if this is all true, it's going to add this information to this array right here. And what information do I bring over? So I'm going to go ahead and bring over solver iterations, right? Solver iterations. I'm going to go ahead and do cable stiffness. I'm going to do cable width. Now the endpoint is going to be, be defined by some math I'm going to do over here based on this endpoint. So I let's see. Actually, you know what? I can just drag this right in. Um, there's some other math that we're going to do for cable length, and that's what I was thinking of. 
Um, and so let's get the cable length right now. Um, so basically, we have an we have a beginning point and an end point, and we need to get the length in between so we can always auto-generate the proper cable length. How do we do that? Um, well, how do you get a length? You subtract a vector minus a vector, and then you can pull off that that uh, that value and say get length. Oops, we don't want to get path length. That's not correct at all. We want to we want to get a vector length. So vector length, yeah, vector length, and that gives us our length. So it'll always be the proper length uh, between the power poles. So cable length. Set that as that. Uh, what else we got here? Current socket name. We're gonna want to just drop that right there. Current socket name. Uh, let's see the position, which will be the current index loop. And just plug that in right there. And then the current cable reference. Uh, do we make a current cable reference? You know, I didn't save that. Comp I didn't save that out. But uh, just so that these lines are clean, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So promote to variable. We're going to say current cable reference. Okay. And then we can go ahead and plug that in right here. Uh, apologies for any ugliness. Current cable reference. And apparently I'm blind. Current cable reference. Where are you? Current cable ref. Okay. Slap that right in there. And then that should, yeah, that fills out um, all the information we need for that. And something fun about this is if you just click on it, you say hide unconnected pins, it just makes it look clean. Um, so, you know, feel free to do that if this is looking a little messy there for you. Okay, so we've done a bit of stuff here, okay? So we've set up the infrastructure to set up individual cable lines for cable, all of cable one, all of cable two, and we can define what cable one and cable two are going to look like in the editor, you know, based on what we put here right? And then we actually have to set these variables now. So we have all information collected. Now we have to create a function to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and create that function. So I'm just going to go ahead over to my functions right here, say, you know, plus function. So I'm gonna create a new function. I'm gonna say set cable vars, you know, like so variables. And it's gonna open that up for me automatically, you know, you can see right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. I'm going to say inputs. I'm going to add a new input and I'm going to say uh, cable info struct in. Click on the little boolean right here. Click on the little uh, variable selector right there and I'm going to say uh, let's see cable info struct v3 because that's what I'm going to be bringing into this thing. And so I can drag off this. Let's say break. Expand it. And now you can see all of the variables I'm going to set. So I'm going to have you guys, I'm going to show you how to do the first one. Actually, I'm just going to show you how it looks entirely. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to copy this actually from uh, a previous setup I had like so. And I'm going to have you guys just pause and then recreate these. So I, all you have to do is drag off this. And so it's, this says end location, just type end location and say set end location. Same thing for cable length, solver iterations, enable stiffness and cable width. Now, this is all from this function and we're gonna reuse this later on. Um, so I'm just, you know, so we, we should definitely uh, use this function to make things simpler for ourselves and then go ahead and then um, run in like the like endpoint to endpoint, you know, anything that's here, go ahead and, you know, set the variable for it. So go ahead and just look at this, pause, set it up, we'll be back. Okay, and now that you're back, um, done pausing here, you should uh, you should have something like this. So end location, cable length, solve iterations, enable stiffness, and cable width. And once again, you can always add more info this information to the struct. And you can set more variables. This is just a good base to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and close this function out. Go back to our construction script here. I'm going to drag in the set cable vars. Okay. You can see there's a little input right here. So I'm going to plug this in to the chain of logic right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the struct. I'm just gonna double click this line so I have another point right here. And I'm just gonna drag it over so it looks a little cleaner. Ah, look at that, nice. Okay, so now these cable variables will be set. Hit compile. If everything has gone right here, we go back to our editor. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so we can see right here that, um, that's so goofy, I have to get rid of that. Um, we can see right here that uh, all the cable lines are being set appropriately. Um, so if I click on this and I look at the cables themselves. Oh, oh, you know what I did? I messed this up. Okay, so 
Um, this is a good learning opportunity right here. So once again, I've added all this to the array, but now it just keeps adding up. I have to go back and I have to clear it before the beginning of all this looping, right? Or else it's gonna have some really, it's gonna have the problems like we're having right now. Things aren't gonna be working appropriately. So we're gonna clear the cable info struct internal, just like so, hit compile, fingers crossed, there we go. Um, save for that crazy little uh, spasm right here. I think that's not supposed to be there. Um, you can see though that uh, everything is taking the right information. So if I come here, look at both of these, um, length of 10, length, of, uh, sorry, width of 50 there, or sorry, not length, cable width, width of 10, width of 50. Um, you can, I can modify those for the entire string of cable two. It's cable two and then cable one. So if I just cleared this out, just put some random number in there, it would it would forget where it's what it would, what it was supposed to be doing because it's not referencing the right cable anymore and it would break everything. So each cable, once again, requires its own member here in the cable infostruct editor. Uh, cable one though. Okay, so let's fix this weird little um, mess up right here. So what's happening is it's trying to connect to something, but it doesn't know what to do with it. It's connecting to zeros, like the world zero, 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 I believe, because um, there's no mesh ahead of it. So how do we fix that? Um, well, we look to the mesh ahead, always look one mesh ahead, and if, if there is no mesh there, it's not gonna do anything. And we're gonna make that happen by dragging off the, the, the one we get, you know, the, uh, this get where we get the one mesh ahead, and we're gonna say is valid, and make it so it only does the operation. So we're gonna stick it right here between the socket name and the add cable component. It's only gonna add a cable if there's actually something to connect it to, like it's a valid thing to connect to, right? Compile it, oh, there we go, that's so much nicer. Problem solved, look at us solving problems here. You know, it's funny, you uh, put the stuff together and you kind of like forget these little things when you're making it. Um, but yeah, so there you go, um, problem solved. Okay, so this is this is the basis. So we have the ability to, you know, um, obviously we can make poles, all the connections auto-generate. We can go ahead and control um, what cables get what main variables for the entirety of the line. Those are all 50, it's awesome. And we can select these individual poles and modify them. So turn them whichever way you want, and they will generate appropriately. So that's really awesome. So it's doing everything we need it to do, except for what if you want to have a little segment of a line be modifiable? So like maybe um, you want this one to be broken, nothing in between, or you want to be, you know, just like have a little bit of variation to it. Um, that's where this cable override setting system comes into play, and that's gonna be the next part. Uh, so let's just come in here really quick, select everything, hit comment, and this will be our add cable and connection system or something like that. Something to that effect. That should be good. And now we're gonna move down here and start working on some overrides. All right, so we're gonna create those override settings. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So this is gonna be another nested loop. So let's grab our cable infostruct internal and then I know we're gonna to want to have our override settings here. So cable override, drag off so for each loop, for each loop. And then I wanna go up here and when this, is, when this is completed. So basically when all of this is completed, this, you know, you drag off this and this is when, you know, this, this says when all it's completed, move on. So we're gonna move on to down here. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag off this and break it, expose it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for right here. Break it, let's align those together. And then we're gonna do a little um, position and socket name comparison. So I wanna compare these names. So I'm gonna say equal. So cable socket name equal. And then I wanna compare uh, the position on the spline. So cable position on spline, so equals again, we're gonna do integer Oops, not integer plus integer, that is incorrect. We're going to do uh, equal integer. So let's see, uh, position on spline, position on spline. Okay, so we know that if the names are equal and the position on the spline is equal, we are targeting the right location, right? Because those are the two defining factors, right? So we have uh, position and name. So we know it's gonna be like cable one, 
position three or something like that. And we can define that here on this override. So let's just say when this, so when I hook everything up, so it works, um, let's just say cable, oops, cable one. And then I want to set it to, let's just make it ridiculous. So it really stands out and it's going to be position. Let's just hypothetically say three. And let's say we want to give it some slack as well. So all those variables. And then we're going to come back over here. Now we're actually going to set up the logic to make that happen. So just like I did up here where I was kind of, you know, um, making some type of like, hey, like only if it's the right socket name can we move forward. Well, I want to do both of these. Uh, so it needs to be right socket name position. So I'm going to drag off this and say and. And then I want an and boolean. Plug both of these in. So this will only return true if this and this haha, and uh, is correct. So drag off the and, type in branch, and this will be our little filter for selecting the right ones here. Okay, and then we're gonna set these variables based on, so obviously like um, the information I'm getting for the cable override settings, right? Um, that's shown externally and anything I put into there, which is what I'm putting in here, right? Um, is coming through and I'm going to be setting those again. So let's drag off the set uh, cable vars, right? So if it's true, I want to reset the cable vars for those specific places um, in the, in the, you know, the, the uh, structure um, of the cable system. So let's do that. So I'm going to drag off this and just say make. And ta-da, we have all those things exposed to then override. And so now we have to decide which comes from where and Basically, um, anything we drag straight over will just stay the same. But um, I want the amount of slack. So cable length will amount of slack to add. Oh, you know what? I have to add those together. So let's go ahead and hit plus, float, plus, float. I want to get the cable length, and then I want to get this, the amount of slack to add. It's going to add them together, and that'll be our new cable length. Um, position on the spline. That remains the same, so it's just default position on spline. Uh, cable so, so the socket name remains the same. Solver iterations remains the same. All this, most of all this stuff remains the same. To be honest with you, uh, cable width uh, changes. That's something we wanted to override, and then the endpoint stays the same. Uh, I think that's it, isn't that it? Cable reference stays the same. So everything stays the same except for the anything that's up here you want to override, which is kind of obvious, I guess, in hindsight. Cable width, uh, cable position on spline, amount of slack to add. So if I compile, I might as well just save it. And look back here. Is it going to work? Holy cow, look at that. It totally did. So we over we had we had overridden this, this one uh, position right here. So let's just take a look at that again. So I was targeting three. Let's target two. Let's target one. Let's target zero. Right, zero based system so zero is like the first one and let's say we want that to be nothing at all you know it's like so you can keep adding these in you know i could say like okay well i want to do uh cable cable two and then i want it to also have an empty spot and i want the empty spot to be in the same spot there or maybe i just want to stagger it you know make it look good so let's say two you know it's like this is a post-apocalyptic world and there's cables missing or something i don't freaking know you can choose any of that stuff um, but that does it, you know, like this is how the system works. And now you can like looking back at the system, you can see how you can easily expand it. Right. So like all you have to do is you can create, you know, any power line mesh with sockets. And as long as those sockets are appropriately named, everything is taken care of for you. Uh, you just have to make sure that you actually list, um, the, the base information for, for what you want those sockets to be. So if I had five more sockets, I just add more sockets, you know, cable, you know, cable, uh, three, cable four, cable five, cable six, you know, whatever you want to do. It's really straightforward. Um, and obviously I just deleted that one so it doesn't know what to do with it anymore. Uh, let's control Z that. Okay. So uh, what else to do with this? It does everything we want at this point. It's really easy to expand. Um, how about I'll give you guys a tip for variation and then I'll let you go. So if you want to create um, different meshes here, uh, it's really easy to do. Just literally have new meshes and name those and, and make sure you have the proper sockets listed in them, like cable one, cable two, you know, or however many cables you have. And then all you have to do is come up here uh, to the static mesh, like where you're setting it and drag off that type in select. Okay. 
And now, however many, let's just hypothetically say you have three uh, unique meshes you want to use. So just add another one on there. And then you want it to randomly pick which one, right? So it's procedurally generated. Just drag off this and say random integer, oops, into random integer uh, in range. And so what's our range? Option zero to option two. So zero to two. And so since it's zero base, that's three items overall. And now it's just going to randomly pick one of the meshes that you select here to be the new static mesh. And as long as it has a, the proper um, cable socket names in there, it'll automatically generate everything for you. So there you guys go. Um, this system, it, oops, I just broke it because I, yeah, I did, okay, well, that's fine. Um, all right. So there you guys go. I mean, here's the system. Um, it's simpler, cleaner, more dynamic. Um, if you, you know, if you look at this, like it might be a little confusing at first, especially if you're not used to working with some of these things, but you should easily be able to expand this in any way you want um, and is way better than the last version. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, you know, drop me a message in the comments if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. If I've done something that's silly or you think could be um, done in a much more um, effective way, you know, I'm always learning, you know, you know, drop that, uh, drop me a line as well. And I will, uh, I'll see what I can do to make some updates. Uh, but yeah, there's that base system for you. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, let me know if you make something cool with it. Catch you later.